welcome wherever you are. I'm Charlie. I'm Janet. We are so glad you're able to join us on the No Zone today. This is a place where we make learning fun. Well, and I'm Marara. Wow. Ma, what's wrong? You seem a bit down today. Well, Charlie and I went for a run last week. And that sounds like fun. Well, yeah, well, until I lost. <coughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Give me your hand. Sorry. Okay, um, Charlie, what's going on? Well, you see, a certain lion was so convinced that he was going to beat me by a huge distance that he bet his favorite headband and then he lost. What? 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 But, but that, that's because okay. you tripped me. I tripped you. Uh-huh. Marara, I won that race fair and square and you have four legs. I only have two. Ha! What? 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 Four, 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 four. One, two, three, four. 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 Uh. All right, um, Charlie, how about you guys have very much? Yeah, 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 very much. And then we'll see. But for now, let's get on with the show. Yeah, let's get on with the show because we have an exciting show lined up today. Yes, we do. We have big three, hot numbers, and a whole lot more. But first of all, let's go to the chill out zone and meet our studio guests. Hey, Marara, meet you at the chill out zone. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. What? What? I, I, did you say four? Hello, everyone. <sighs> Hello. We are very glad to have you here helping us with the show. Are you excited to be on the No Zone? Yes. We're also happy that you're here. And for you at home, we are thrilled that you're able to join us today. Whoa. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mara. Well, so, Charlie, can we have a rematch? Well, anytime, anywhere. In fact, I'm almost sure your little headband will make me run faster. What? Yes. What? What? Guys, you guys, you stop. We have a show to do. Do you think your run can wait? Yeah, it can wait. <laughs> all right, now who can tell us what today's buzzwords are all about? The buzzwords are about athletics. That's right. Now, who can tell us what the buzzwords are? Cross country. Compete. Spectators. Trophy. Right, excellent. Tell you what, why don't we look out for these buzzwords throughout today's show? <laughs> right now though, let's go to Maktano and find out what the gang is up to. It's time for Junction Teens. You know, I've ridden a cross country race before when I was in Ethiopia. Wow, those guys can run. Ah, forget it, huh? I'm the cheater here. And if there's anyone who's going to win that race, it's me. Yani, I can already see myself holding that trophy, whatever it is, when I cross that finish line. You guys, we have to go. The race starts in a few hours. And I have to stretch. And where's the lady? Nowadays, she's becoming late. Uh, but it's obvious who she's with. She's going to take her track suit. Yeah, right. <laughs> I always must be enjoying the company, eh? <laughs> Isn't there that saying that says two is company, three is crowd? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Uh, marathon. Wrong dragon. Oh, steeplechase. Spell it. S-T-E-E-P-L-E-C-H-A-S-E. -E -E -E. Correct. Hey, 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 Leleti. Eh, you took all that time to get your tracksuit, eh? Eh, see, that's a long time. So, I was a little late. I got a little distracted. Guys, sorry to break up the party, but we have to go. Or am I the only one who's interested in this race? No, I'm ready. Let's go. And we're going to be late. And whose fault is that? Just admit it, you're with her. Come on, Amos, are we really gonna go through this again? Just admit it. Okay, fine. I was with Leleti, but we just happened to run into each other. Then we started talking about the cross-country race, then the next triple jump event. Oh, and then we passed by this beautiful garden. It was so peaceful, okay, okay, so many okay, colors. stop it. I'm going to be sick just hearing you going on and on about Leleti and flowers. And since when were you interested in gardens and flowers? No. Well, Leleti... Eh, 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 eh. Wow. Is this how Rudisha feels before a race? It's so intense. What? 
<laughs> Don't you feel shy to stretch in front of all these people, especially the boys? Why should she? Stretching is important, especially before any race. I hope this year there won't be so many spectators like last year. Nita, this is Mokteno's biggest cross-country race. The whole town will be there. I wish my mom was there to see me finish the cross line. We'll send her pictures. Hey guys, are you warmed up and ready to go? Where's your sidekick? Who, oh, Amos. Is there anyone else? He's right behind you, searching for you again. You just left me to stretch. I had to tell you. Don't say, say it. I'm going to get some glucose. Yeah. Okay, get some for me, guys. I need to stretch. Hey, Nita. I've never seen you in shorts before. I feel so guilty because I haven't done a thing. Yeah, well, if you stop hanging out with the satin. <coughs> Where's Nita? The race is about to start soon. We left her stretching with Amos. Where's Amos? Someone better find her. She has to defend her title for last year. Oh boy, I'll find her. Okay then, boys and girls, let me show you how we do this. <laughs> Hi, Yamicha. Come on, guys, what do you know? Let me show you, eh? Ah. You guys are so childish. <laughs> but it's all in preparation, you know. No, you're still all childish. Mm. Are we or are you just too chicken to compete? Mm. Is that a dare? Come on, Leleti, show us what you got. Yeah. 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 All oh. right, mm -hmm. do what I do. Okay. Yeah. Nita, why did you change? The race is about to start. I feel unwell. I think I'll just speak to it. Nita, what's wrong? You can tell me. <sighs> so much has happened within a year. Last year when I won the race, I didn't look like this. I was different. Different? I don't understand. <sighs> I wasn't like this. Oh, now I understand. You feel self-conscious about your body. It's normal. Turning into a woman, as my mother always says, it's a beautiful natural process. Yeah, but everyone I know knows I'm changing. I just can't handle the looks. What looks? Someone laughed at me today. I shouldn't have worn those shorts. Who laughed at you? It doesn't matter. I'm not going to do sports anymore. I'll be wearing my trousers or my skirt with stocking. Why do that? Your legs are perfectly fine. Just ignore whoever laughed at you. How can I ignore when it was a boy? Is that what all boys think of me? When I started developing, it was quite hard at first. I mean, the stares you get, especially from the boys, can be scary. But they are also going through the same process too. But in time, it will go away. What if it doesn't? Trust me, it will. Nita, you can't stop living your life and doing the things you're good at, like cross country, just because of what one person said. Now, who's this boy who laughed at you? It was Amos. Amos. I'll squash him like Ugali. Now, I trust you'll change and we'll meet at the field. Don't worry, we'll all be by your side. Okay, give me some time to think. Hey, after the race, wanna go to the fry zone for a snack? Don't you do everything with Freddy? Ah, Freddy is preoccupied. In fact, do me a favor. Go and spread the word out that I'm looking forward to starting my own junction team. Cool, I'll spread the word. Interview starts now. Okay. If you saw a lunchbox on a desk and it had sausages, hmm? and all the yummy food in the world, and you are alone in class, what would you do? I, I wouldn't take it. That would be wrong. What is this interview for? Next. Do you have a girlfriend? I? Girls? No. What did you get in your last maths test score? Well, I actually got 80%. No nuts. Next. What is your opinion on the current controversy on climate change? Yeah? Welcome to the club.
Where are Nita and Diana? And Amos. They better get here soon. Uh, yeah, because they can't start without them. Chappelle don't hold the rest. They let you out see the finish line. I have to go look for Imus. You bet you'll see me. More like my dust behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were supposed to go and get Nita. I did. Then where is she? We have a problem. What's the matter? Is Nita okay? I saw her at the hideout and she had changed into her home clothes. What? She doesn't want to race anymore. Someone made fun of her legs. Who would do that? Let's go and find them. She's been feeling pretty self-conscious already in the sports uniform. So when someone laughed at her, she couldn't take it. Who did this? Amos, look, time is running out. I spoke to Nita, but it would be better if someone else went to check on her. I'll go and handle Amos. I'll crush him like ice. Hey, hey, hey. L let's not use violence. I'll go and get Nita. I'll come with you. What's going on? Meet the Junction Team crew. My crew. Okay, I understand that I was late, Freddy, but... Freddy, you are my boy. Like a brother. But times have changed and I think it's time we went our separate ways. But you can still hang out once in a while. You've got to be kidding me. Hey, put it there. For all time's sake, come on. Get out now, please. Now! We're in class five or something. We're just about to do our class eight exams and all you're thinking about is a new crew. You're my best friend no matter what, so let's just go run this cross-country race. And besides, come on, the Junction Teens crew. I know you could have come up with a much better name than that. As opposed to the Junction Teens. But I thought you were an artist. Hey, I came up with many names like JT Crew, JT Lions, <laughs> you see? I know I hang out with Leletti a lot. I'll try to be balanced. Whatever. Diana told us. I knew it. This is so embarrassing. There's nothing wrong with you. I don't know. What happened to you? You used to be so confident. Mother Nature. You need to defend your title. And I think for now you should wear tracksuit trousers and we'll talk to Teacher Pendo because she'll understand. That will be fine. And don't worry about Amos. Babu and Diana will take care of him. Okay, let's go. Amos, you've got a lot of explaining to do. Ah, after the race. But if you must, talk to my dust because I'll be at the finish line. So, why did you laugh at Nita? What's going on, guys? I sting like a butterfly. Ah, uh, uh, it's fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, uh, what you said? What is up with you guys? You laughed at Nita and she quit the race. If she can't defend her title. But you made fun of her when she was in a sports uniform. <gasps> oh! <laughs> uh, look, Brian, Brian. No, he's mine. Amos, concentrate. Yes? Why would you do that? Is it an intimidating tactic? It wasn't right at all. Now, when Nita joins us, you'll have to apologize. Otherwise, you'll not make it to the cross country's finish line. Am I clear? She asked you a question. Oh my, fine. Guys, let's go to the track. Let's give Amos some privacy. And Amos, I'll find out if he did what he discussed. It wasn't much of a discussion, more a threat. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't mean to hurt you. I only laughed because you look different, in a nice way that is. And you caught me off guard. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Thank you. Let's go to the track. I've been practicing. Although I won't catch up with you, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Anita, please don't tell anybody what has just happened. I have a reputation, you know. <laughs> it's okay, Amos. Your secret is safe with me. That was a brilliant episode. I really learned a lot. Did you learn anything? Yes. yes! Nice. Now, as we also, as girls, we can participate in any sport we put our hearts to and nothing should stop us. So what did you learn, Marara? Well, I learned that we can overcome any kind of hurdle, which is why I, Marara, am going to beat 
you, Charlie, in our race. Oh, 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 our race. He wants to put hurdles in our race. I'm not only going to beat you in our race. What? what? I'm going to jump over every hurdle. Oh. And I'm going to win that race by so big a distance, I'm going to oh, take oh, your oh. other headband wait, wait, wait. and Man, your wrist you can't well. jump. Sh you cannot Guys. jump. Guys. I can jump. Shelly? I'm sorry. I'm confused. Hey, did you spot any buzzwords? I bet you did. Now, can someone remind us what today's buzzwords are? Cross country. Compete. Spectator. Trophy. Good job, all of you. only mean one thing. It means it's time for us to go into the learning zone and join Teacher Pendo for another fantastic English lesson. Yes, it is time for Cool Words. Cool Words. Cool, cool Words. Welcome to Cool Words. Now let's look at this extract from a poem together. The morning comes. The old man leaves his hat and walks along the path towards his farm. He faces east and sees the cruel sun. His eyes explore the sky. He shakes his head. A dry wind blows and fills his eyes with dust. Now, as you can see, the first three lines of the poem contain underlined words. Now, these words tell us about something that happens and something that the old man does. In other words, they are action words. Now, who can remind us what we call these words? Yes, a word? I think they are called verbs. Mm -hmm. You are right, Awar. Now, words which tell us what happens or what someone does are called verbs. Now, look at the poem again, and I'd like us to identify some other verbs. So, who would like to go first? Yes, Abdiwali? He faces east. Faces. Mm -hmm. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Ombajo. And sees the cruel sun. Sees. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Someone else? Yes, Andati. His eyes explode. Explode. Very good. Someone else? Oh, Chipendo. Yes, Marara. Um, he shakes his head. Shakes. Mm -hmm. Well done. Now, excellent work, all of you. Now, we are going to look at a different form of verbs. Now, let's look at these sentences and read them out loud together. I am a teacher. You are a pupil. My uncle is a driver. The place was quiet and deserted. His friends were too scared to talk. Very good. The underlined words in these sentences are also verbs. Well, that Japendo. Yes, Mara. Now, I, I don't get it. How can they be verbs and I don't see anything happening or someone doing anything at all? Well, Marara, they are different forms of the verb be. Now, we use am, is, and are when we are talking about how things are now. And we use was and wa when we are talking about a time in the past. Now, I'd like us to now construct sentences that contain verbs in them. Uh, it will be great to think of sentences related to athletics. Who would like to go first? Yes, I will. David Rudisha broke the world's record in the 800 meters race recently. Mm -hmm. Very good. Who'd like to go next? Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, uh, uh, Marara. The spectators were excited at the end of the race. Uh -huh. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Abdiwali. Macau was awarded and a gold medal when he came first in the marathon. Excellent. Another sentence? Yes, Ombajo. A marathon is a very long race. Mm -hmm. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Andati? During the competition, our school came first in the relay race. Mm -hmm. Well done. Now, all those are very creative sentences. Now, well done. Now, I'd like us to look at the word on the board. This word, whose. Now, could somebody come up with a sentence using the word whose? Uh, Teacher Pendo, can yes, I try? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. 
The country whose athletes are best at steeplechase is Kenya. Mm -hmm, very good. Now, whose is an example of a relative pronoun. We use relative pronouns to refer to a noun mentioned before and of which we are adding more information. Um, that sounds really complicated, Japendo. Not to worry. So let's look at your sentence in more detail. So in the example that you gave, who's tells us that the athletes belong to Kenya. So the athletes are relative to the country, our noun. And because we're talking about belonging, we use the relative pronoun whose. Now, can some of you think of other examples using the word whose? Yes, Awar? The athlete whose knee was injured was Esther. Great. So the knee belonged to Esther. Someone else? Abdiwali? That the athletes who won is Kenya. Mm -hmm, perfect. The athletes belonged to Kenya. Can someone give us another one? Yes, Ombajo? Kilome is the town whose athletes are good in cross country. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So the athletes come from Kilome. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Andati? The team whose cross-country runner won the trophy is Kilifi. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now the runner belonged to the Kilifi team. Fantastic work, all of you. Now before we finish, I want to share a secret with you. <gasps> a secret? Did you pendo? Yes, Marara. Now, if I'm feeling tired, I'll put extra sugar in my tea. Oh, Teacher Pendo, that's not a proper secret. I always put extra sugar in my tea. Marara, too much sugar is not good for your health. Now, let's look at the sentence on the board. If I'm feeling tired, I'll put extra sugar in my tea. Now, Eve tells us that it is a conditional sentence. For me to have extra sugar in my tea, I'd have to be tired. Now, I'd like us to come up with uh, conditional sentences, each of us, but remember, with a conditional sentence, it doesn't have to be anything realistic. Who would like to go first? Yes, I would. If I had a lot of money, I could buy a house. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Someone else? Yes, Abdiwali? If I could have any job, I would like to be president. Aha, uh -huh, very good. President Abdiwali. Someone else? Yes, Ombajo? If I could travel, I will go to the moon. Aha, uh -huh, excellent. Someone else? Yes, Andati? If I could drive any car, I will buy a Ferrari. Aha, uh -huh, good one. Yes, Marara? If I was allowed to do anything I wanted, I would have had a nice long sleep. <laughs> Okay, Marara. Well, great work, all of you. Well, that's all we've got time for on today's Cool Words, but make sure you join us next time. Um, Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara. If I could watch anything I wanted on television, it would be out there with my speedy. Well, today is your lucky day then, because coming up next is Out There. Sport is a popular part of everyday social life, and Kenya is a great sporting nation. Kenyan athletes have become renowned worldwide, Olympic and Commonwealth champions, and crossing the line in first and second and third has become a common occurrence. And from here in Eldoret, many champions have been made. Perhaps more than anything else, Kenya is renowned all over the world for its track and field athletes. By 2009, it could be argued that Kenya was at the peak of its athletic powers. The late Samuel Wanjiro winning the Olympic marathon gold medal was the most memorable. It was the first Olympic marathon gold for Kenya. But the women too have not been left behind. Tegla Lorupe is now the world record holder in women's marathon. Catherine Dereba won the Boston Marathon in 2000 and went on to win two gold medals in world championships in 2005 and 2007. Come on, good people, let's go and find out some of the reasons Kenyan athletes have dominated international distance running in recent years. Just a few kilometers from Eldoret town is the Kepchoge Keino High Performance Training Camp. 
This great facility that its main aim is encouraging talented young Kenyan athletes to reach their full potential is located on a farm owned by legendary Kenyan track star Kipchoge Keino and is an approved high altitude training facility by the International Olympic Committee, IOC. My friend Coach Simba tells me that this ground hosts athletes from different countries. Hilary says he loves running, but if he was to do something else, well, that would be going for more education. Veronica here runs the 3000 meter steeplechase. She is now looking forward to the big win in Barcelona. I have been told that the secret here is to train hard and win easy. <sighs> that is not easy. How come they're not getting tired? It's like they're machines or some robots. <laughs> Wait for me! <laughs> Wait for me! Come on, good people! Wait for me! Oh! Thanks God, the vehicle is here. Thank you. Let's go and follow the rest and see how they are doing. The athletes often wake up at 6 a.m. in order to start the main training session. And even though they train together, each trainee has an incredibly specific training timetable. Look at them, they are still going on. Hey, look, <laughs> Veronica is done and she is still strong. She says that her secret here is endurance and her role model is David Rudisha. Oh, come on, let's go back and wait for the rest in the house. Hey, look who is here. Hilary and the rest of the team are back just in time for lunch. It might be said that Kenyan athletes train hard, but it's a one well-calculated training as scheduled by the coaches. Well, I have a long way back home. I wish Hilary and his friends all the best as coach Simba guides them on. May they be the next world champions as the sky is the limit. Until next time, bye for now. Goodbye. My speedy is always keeping us up to speed. I know, I can't wait for next week. <laughs> My speedy might be interesting, but... But? I don't think he's very good at running. I'm sure I could beat him in a race. Wait, <laughs> well, you know what that means, right? What? That means what? if you could beat him in a race, oh. because I beat you, that makes me the no-zone running champion. Wait, 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 wait. That's because I let you win. You yes, let you, me and win. And you trip me, yes, you trip I, me. I, uh, yes, you trip me. What, what, what? All right, stop, what, what, what? stop, Mara. Well, maybe my speed is good at field events like the javelin. Well, I'd like to see him do the triple jump. <laughs> well, he would probably be really good at that, actually. Speaking of the triple jump, it's time for us to take a jump into something that involves the number three. That's right. It's time to throw some mathematical problems to our guests. Right. It's time for... The Big Three. Welcome to the big three. Now, here it is all about numbers. There are two teams, there are three sums, and there are five seconds to solve each sum. The winning team is the team that solves the most sums correctly, and they get to go back to their school with these wonderful textbooks, courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. Right, now, if the scores are tied at the end, we will move into a tiebreaker question. That's right. Now, in this game, you only hear the question once and you will only see the question uh, written down in the end of the game. Now, it is all about your timings, which means that they have five seconds to solve each sum. You must write down your answer on the answer pad provided within the five seconds. If you do not write down your answer within the five seconds, it will not count even if it is correct. Are the rules clear? 
Yes. All right, and for you at home, be sure to join us and find out how well you do. Now, Mara, are you going to be in charge of the time? Oh, as usual, I will be in charge of the time. Brilliant. We have three questions. Here comes the first one. 12 multiplied by 3 minus 20 plus 4 divided by 5 is what? And start the clock. And stop, 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 stop. All right, time is up, teams. Stop writing. Let's move on to the next sum, please. 23. Take away 13 times 2 plus 5. Divide by 5 equals... And start the clock. And stop, 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 stop. Ooh. Well, it's getting very intense in the studio. We have one sum left. Let's make it count. 5 plus 5 multiplied by 3 divided by 2 minus 4 is what? And start the clock. And stop, stop, stop. Time's up, time's up. Time is up. Right, it's time to find out how everyone did. So, Team A, please show us your answer for the first sum. Wow, now let's see. Now, oh, Team A has two. Okay, Team B, let's see what you have. And Team B has... Oh, Team B has five. Well then, let's see which of the teams actually got the sum correct. Sum number one. 12 multiplied by three, that is 36. Minus 20, that's 16. Plus four, that is, that's 20. Divided by five, the answer to question one is four. Looks like that none of the teams got that sum correct, but let's move on to the next sum. Team A, please show us your answer for the second sum, please. So, Team A has, oh, Team A has a five for an answer. All right, Team B, let's see what you have. So, Team B has, oh, Team B has three. Hmm. Well, that is a two-point difference. Let's see how big the difference is and which of the teams actually got it correct. Right. 23 minus 13, that's 10. Multiplied by two, that's 20. Plus five, that's 25, divided by five. The answer is five. five. Whoa. <laughs> All right, good job, Team A. Team B, do not worry. We have one more sum to go. So, Team A, please show us your answer for the third sum, please. So, let's see. For the third sum, Team A, oh, it's a blank. Okay. I think Team A ran out of time. I think so, too, Mara. Team B, let's see what you have. So, Team B has, oh, Team B has 11. 11? Well, it's a double digit number. And I'm sorry, Team A, that you ran out of time, but why don't we solve the sum together and see whether Team B has managed to pull off a tie. Right. Five plus five, that's 10. Multiplied by three, that's 30. Divided by 2 is 15, minus 4, the answer is 11. 11. Oh. Wow. Alright, good job there Tim B. And this only means one thing, Charlie, we have a tie, so please explain. Alright, now, the tie is very simple. In the situation of a tiebreaker question, we have two teams still, we have one sum but we still have five seconds. Each team has five seconds to solve the sum correctly. The first team to put up their hand with a correct answer within the five seconds gets to take these wonderful books back to their school. If that team does not have a correct answer, it will fall to the other team to give the answer. If both teams do not give a correct answer, Sadly, the maths books shall remain within the nozzle. Are the rules clear? Yes. Excellent. Janet? All 
right, here goes the sum. 25, take away 4, times 2, plus 8, divide by 2, equals... Start the clock! And stop, 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 stop! Wow! Well, there are a lot of hands going up. Yeah, but... Uh, I yes. think Team B's hand went up first. Team B, what is your answer? Show us your card. Oh, yes, indeed, it is a 25. Exactly. Now, Team A, just in case, what is the answer? Oh, yeah. 25. Team A right. has 25 as well. Well, there's only one way to find out if they're right. Let's solve the sum together. 25 minus 4, that's 21. Multiplied by 2, that's 42. Plus 8, that's 50. Divided by 2, the answer is 25. 25. <laughs> now, we all know what that means. It means that our winners today are... Tim B. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> well, congratulations, Tim B. Don't worry, Team A, I know you both worked very hard, but Team B just raised their hands faster than you did. And for you at home, I hope you had so much fun working out the sums. I bet you enjoyed playing the big three, so be sure to join Chapendo for more fun with numbers on Hot Numbers. But right now, we're going to take a short, short break. But make sure you come back because we still have a lot of fun to go. That's right, we have Hot Numbers, bus stories and spell it. Well, stay tuned and we will be right back. Welcome back to the No Zone, everyone. Yes, we are so glad that you hang out with us and you at home too. Right, now, today's buzzwords are all about athletics. Now, who can remind us what they are? Cross country. Compete. Spectator. Trophy. That's right, excellent. Now, all these buzzwords teach us more about athletics. You know which one of those words is my favorite? Mm -mm. Cross country. And you know what you should wear when you're running? You know, you should be in your full kit, your workout shirt, your shoes, and your headband. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie. Yeah? You know what? I am getting it back after no, the show. You're not. Oh, yes, I am. This is why you're not getting it back. Why? Because the only thing that will fit over your ears is a silver medal for second place. <gasps> yes, I said that. I just said that. Honestly, guys, what's wrong with you? What? Yeah, you know what? Maybe a trip to the world will calm you guys down. It's time for Wild Zone. Hello and welcome to the Wild Zone. Last week, we looked at how tourism can help with the elephants. This week, we look at another method. Here's another solution. Again, a familiar part of conservation these days in Africa. Fences must be paid for, patrolled and checked. They're an unsatisfactory answer to the much bigger question of how many elephants Africa can cope with. Elephants frighten the local people and damage their crops, but tourists and well-wishers from the safety of far away will pay for methods of maintaining some kind of status quo. The elephants, meantime, try to carry on as they always have, but they're becoming increasingly cautious about the dangers of electricity, poachers and furious farmers. Ahmed died on Mount Marsabit in 1974. Since then, his huge tusks have amazed 
streams of school children at Nairobi Museum. And Lake Paradise will be lost to Kenya and the world. What an interesting film. I hope that we can find a way for elephants and humans to live in harmony before it's too late. See you next week for a new film on The Wild Zone. Wow, that was a great episode. I know. I can't wait to watch next week and see what happens next. No, oh, yes, and I am feeling much calm. That's good, Mara. Although, I'm still going to win the race. <sighs> you know what? You too. I'm done. Now, if you would like to know more about Mara's animal friends, you should join the No Zone Club. Yes, that's right. Just text the word zone plus your name and address to... 5606. Six. Yes, and you will become an instant No Zone Club member. Just remember to ask your parents to help you send that text. <laughs> I know what that sound means. It's time for Hot Numbers. Hello, everyone. Hey, Hello, Hello to Jeff Bender. Bender. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Today, we will be continuing with our lesson on angles that we started last week. Oh, to Jeff Bender? Yes, Marara. We are repeating angles again? Well, this time I'll be very good and I'll remember everything. Well, we will be learning new things on Angle Marara. It is just a continuation to add on to what we learned about last week. It is not a repeat. Okay, now we will begin our lesson by learning how to draw a triangle. Oh, Teacher Pendo, I, I know how to draw. I can draw triangles, squares, circles, even lions and Marara, some please do not interrupt my lesson. If you have something to say, just put your paw up. Sorry, Teacher Pendo. Okay, so where were we? Um, right, we will be learning how to draw triangles using a protractor and a ruler. Now, if you've got a protractor and a ruler, a pencil and some paper at home, you can join in. Now, first, we will learn how to draw triangle X, Y, Z. Now, line X, Y is seven centimeters, angle Z, X, Y is 50 degrees, and angle X, Y, Z is 55 degrees. Oh, wait, Chapendo? Yes, Marara. Now, what is angle Y, Z, X? Well, that's a good question, Marara. Okay, now if you draw a line from point A to point B, we'd call that line A, B, just like this one. Now, a triangle has three angles, and it's the middle letter that tells us which angle we are talking about. Now, let's look at the board. Now, this angle here is angle C, A, B. This angle here is angle A, B, C. And the angle at the top here is angle A, C, B. Now, is that clear? Yes. yes. Okay, so back to drawing our triangle. First of all, you are going to draw a line, line X, Y, and make sure it is uh, seven centimeters. So let's um, draw our line there, seven centimeters, and make sure you label your points X and Y. So your line is seven centimeters long and make sure you measure, um, you label your points X and Y. Okay, now it should look like this, but you can see my line is a bit longer so that it's clear for all of us to see. We will then use a protractor to measure 50 degrees from X and then 55 degrees from Y. We will then draw lines from X and Y to meet at Z. And there, we will have a triangle. So let's try it out. You can also join in at home. So 50 degrees from X and 55 degrees from Y. Oh, 
Okay, so it should look something like this. So 50 degrees at X and 55 degrees at Y. So that's your triangle. Now, if we are asked to draw a triangle ABC with line AB being four centimeters and angle ABC 90 degrees and line BC being 6.5 centimeters, how are we going to go about it? Yes, Musioki? First, first we will draw a line, we will draw line AB and measure it to be four centimeters. Very good. So here is my line. Even though it's not up to scale, it's a bit longer, just so that it's clear for all of us to see. So who's going to tell us the next step? Yes, Kaleche? We will draw angle BC from point B. Okay, um, nice attempt, but not quite. You've skipped a step. We will first measure the angle. So would you like to try again? Yes. Measuring, measuring angle ABC to be 90 degrees and draw a line measuring 6.5 centimeters. Hmm, well done. And you can see on the board, I have my line here already drawn up. It's 6.5 centimeters long. So what's the next step? Yes, Manjiro? We will mark point C. Aha, very good. And finally? Yes, Mwangi? We will connect point A and C. Aha, very good. Now, as you can see, we have a triangle right there. Oh, it's Shependo. That was so easy. <laughs> it's good to know that. But now we are going to try something a little bit more complicated. Now let's look at the relationship between angles. On the board, you will see we have a triangle and uh, we have some extra points marked. We have three interior angles, A, B, and C, and two exterior angles, D and E. Now, who can tell me what the interior angles of a triangle should add up to? Yes, Musioki? 180 degrees. Very good. And who can tell me what the angles of a flat line should add up to? Yes, Kaleche? 180 degrees. That's right. So if D plus C equals 180 degrees and A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees, what can we say? Yes, Wanjiro? A plus B is equals to D. Aha, good work. Now we say that angle C is supplementary to angle D and that the exterior angles of a triangle, angle D is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So who can tell me the supplementary angle um, to angle E? Yes, Mwangi? Angle A. Great. And what are the interior opposite angles to E? Oh, oh Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Uh, that would be B and C. Aha, very good. Now that we know the interior angles, we can work out the exterior angles. So who can tell me the measurements of angle D? Yes, Musioki? 140 degrees. Excellent. And angle E? Yes, Kaleche? 130 degrees. Well done. And remember, you could have calculated your answers in two ways. We said that the sum of angle D and C was 180 degrees. So if C is 40 degrees, then angle D has to be 140 degrees. But we also said that angle D was equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles, which are angles A and B. Now, angle A is 50 degrees and angle B is 90 degrees, which gives us... Oh, Teacher Pen, I know that one. Yes, Mararo. Uh, that will give us 140 degrees. Well done. And excellent work, everyone. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time for today, but why don't you practice drawing triangles at home? And make sure you join us next time for more hot numbers. Oh, Teacher Pen, Teacher Pen. Yes, Mararo. I really understand triangles from all angles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know, Marara. Well, now it's time to see what's the latest job being profiled in Career Zone. Can you tell us a little about yourself? My name is uh, Jimmy Simba. 
I'm the technical director of HPTC in Fooley's uh, High Performance Training Center. How did you find yourself in this line of work? Since uh, my primary days, I've been a sportsman. I've been, I've been, I've been a boxer, karateka. I played handball and bodybuilding. And then uh, there was running in the 400 and uh, doing the long jump. Did you need any qualifications, training or experience for your job? I'm a retired Marine or a Navy man from Kenya Navy. In the Navy, I did a physical training instructor. I was also to keep uh, the soldiers fit. And that is uh, from the recruit to the commander. Uh, and then um, after that, I got into special training for the athletics. I did up to my diploma level. And then after that, I did my job practice on uh, physical massage, athletic massage, of which I did in, uh, in Ireland. Please tell us what you do in a typical day. Early in the morning, when the, the air is still fresh and the, the world is cool and peaceful, that is from six or quarter to six. We have long runs sometimes, or maybe we go to do the hill climbing for stamina and endurance. And then uh, we come back for breakfast. After that, we take a break up to three o'clock. And then we have easy runs and exercises in the afternoon. What is the best aspect of your job? I get quite a, a good feeling that uh, when I work with a foreigner to a level that uh, he succeeds. Because for a Kenyan, it's normal. But for uh, foreigners, it's quite an achievement. What are the main challenges of your job? This being a place, a center of uh, development. You get people who are talented, but they're not aware. So you need to get into them, make them get the feeling and get that love of the sport and uh, bringing in the special discipline that you need as a, as a sportsman. In your opinion, what skills or characteristics does one need in this line of work? Think big but start small, that is doing things gradually. Looking into the future, do you have an overall career goal? The coaching never ends. It's like uh, what people say that a soldier never retires. When the passion is there, you can go as far as you like. What advice would you give anyone interested in your line of work? There's self-discipline and there's self-destruction. Choose the best out of the two for you to succeed in whatever you do. Not only sports, but your lifetime. What an interesting career that was. Oh, yes it was. Although I'm not sure if I'm competitive enough. Well, neither am I. Uh, really? That, I don't... What? But speaking of the competitive nature of life, I think it's time we have a little competition of our own. Yes, spell it. <gasps> what, what? Did I say spell it? Mm -hmm. Bye! Alright, it's time for us to put our spelling cups on and see how many words we can spell correctly. It's time for spell it. Animal, animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. respect. Deep. Deep. vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to spell it. Mosyoki. Andati. And Awol, you are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's Nozone Spelling Champion. Now the winner will walk away with their very own Nozone Dictionary. Each contestant has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Each word is worth one point. 
So the more words you spell correctly, the higher your chances of winning. Now all these words are about athletics. Are the rules clear? Yes. Alright, I worry you are up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. <clears throat> Award. Your 30 seconds start now. Award. A W A R D. Line. L I N E. Race. R A C E. Button. B A W -T, T L E. Country. C A U C A U O N -R N T R Y. Trophy. T R O P H Y. Javelin. Repeat. Javelin. J A V E W L I N. Marathon. M A R O R O T H A N. Time is up. Well done, Award. And Dati, you are up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. And Dati, your 30 seconds start now. Cross. C C R O W S. Lane. L A N E. Jump. J U M P bronze repeat bronze B R O W N locks locks L, L O C K S winner W I W N E R gymnast repeat gymnast J I M N U S T Track. time is up well done on that Monsieur Key, you are up next Please take your place on the spelling zone. Musyoki, your 30 seconds start now. Gold. G-O-L-D. Run. R-U-N. Riots. Repeat. Riots. R-I-O-T-S. Finish. F-I-N-I-S-H. Triple. T-R-I-P-P-L-E. Hammer. H-U-M-M-E-R. Compete. C O M P E T Decathlon T E C T O N L Y Silver S I L V E R Spectator Time S P is up. Well, that was quite a close edition of Spell It. I think we should jump straight into the results. In joint second place with a total of four points, we have Awur and Andati, which means today is No Zone Spelling Champion with a total of five points. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Musioki. <laughs> Congratulations, Musioki. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Here's your dictionary. Show everyone at home your dictionary right over there. Another round of applause. Woo! Please step back. step back. Now, do not worry. We have consolation prizes for you, courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. And that was an excellent round of Spell It. It was so close. Yes, it was. But do you know what I feel like right now? Mm -hmm. A good story. Do you a have any? A good story? Yeah. Actually, I do have a good story. Mm -hmm. See, the sun was just above the hills, uh -huh. and then Marara was trying to catch up to me, and he couldn't. Charlie, I was too fast no, no, not that kind of a story. Okay, well, in that case, why don't we go and find out what our friends are up to? Let's join Specs, Rah, Bumba, and Zawadi on bus stories. Haven't you all got homes to go to? See, that's the new guy. I hear he's really good at football. How do you know? All boys are good at playing soccer. Really? And then I've heard you are horrible at the game. And you played with two left feet. That's not fair. You want to go no? I haven't said that. I'm just saying that not everyone can play soccer. You remember when Raha first came to this school? We all thought that she could that she was a good sprinter. But really, 
Tell us, what did you think of us when you first joined this school last year? You don't want to know. Please. We are curious. Do tell. Okay, so my father decided that we were going to move to Maktano Junction. I had to move from my previous school. And when I came here, not everyone was good to me, including you. That's because you're acting all sweet. Sweet? I wasn't sweet. It's just that because I was better in maths and sports, you guys thought that you had to teach me a lesson. One day, I got onto their bus to find only three pupils on it. Raha, Zawadi and Specs in the bus. Driver Chuma was also there, wearing a sinister look. Before I could ask where the rest were, Zawadi got off her seat and rushed to me at a supersonic speed. In a matter of seconds, I was tied up to one of the bus seats and I cried out for Chuma to help me. He started the bus engine and drove off fast. The bus drove into the forest and went deeper and deeper in. There was no clearly marked road here, and I was scared, wondering what these people wanted with me. The bus came to an abrupt halt in the middle of the thick forest. We all turned to Chuma, the driver, trying to find out what had happened, but he also had no idea. He jumped out of the bus and went to the bonnet as we watched. Suddenly, Chuma disappeared in the thin air, and we all panicked, wondering where he had disappeared to. Where exactly did he disappear to? I wonder too. And where were the gang holding Boomba hostage? Didn't Chuma have a map to check where he was taking the gang? Were you guys scared? Of course we were scared. Too scared indeed that we just kept still, waiting and waiting for Chuma to resurface. The stillness was disrupted when we suddenly heard loud footsteps which shook the entire bus. We were all very, very scared, and I begged the gang to untie me from the seat. They refused. I begged, but they told me that they did not trust me. I begged and begged in vain. Just then, the shadow came in front of the bus and stared at us. Glaring at us, with its bright and shiny red eyes like fire. We all wondered what the creature was. I decided that it was time to put personal matters aside, so I showed them how I could become invisible. I was impressed to learn that they all had superpowers just like me. I told them the game plan I had, and a skeptical specs came and untied me. The rest were not happy with this. But Specs told them to chill. The enemy was the shadow and not me. The shadow was eyeing us curiously as if ready to attack us. And we quickly came up with the game plan. Zawadi quickly picked up the rope that she had used to tie me and ran up towards the shadow at a supersonic speed. Specs tried to read the shadow's mind but developed a stinging headache and he fainted. The rest looked on in panic, but I quickly mobilized them and reminded them that we needed to focus. So Raha let out a deafening cry that confused the shadow. Zawadi seized the moment to go around the shadow with the rope. The shadow, feeling defeated, ran for his life, disappearing into the forest. We decided to get out of there. Specs had come too, and now we needed to find Chuma the driver. Couldn't the gang have used one of them to drive the bus instead of going to the forest to find Chuma? Ish, and just leave him there. That's inhuman. But the forest was dangerous. For all they knew, he might have already been dead because he was gone for long. What happened next? So, we decided to walk together and to find Chuma. But we went in the direction in which the shadow had gone. As we continued walking, suddenly, the ground started shaking violently as we had a laughter that filled the air. This gave us goosebumps and we were scared than ever before. Just then in the distance, we spotted Chuma and the shadow having a cup of tea. They seemed to be having a blast. Chuma motioned for us to join them and a scared lot, we slowly approached cautiously. Chuma explained to us the importance of communicating well. He told us that he had gotten lost in the forest and not only did the shadow give him directions but also offered him tea. 
the shadow had come to find us to get us to go have a cup of tea but we instead attacked him instead of waiting to hear what he had to tell us or what had brought him there the gang was very apologetic to the shadow and also to bumba for assuming the worst about him bumba also apologized to them for assuming that they were rude and arrogant even before getting to know them the shadow then stretched out its own gown for all to hop on as it dropped them off home seeing that their bus was spoiled so from that day onwards they decided that communicating well was important at all levels that was a great story did it happen for real mm. well we'll leave that for you to figure out well that was a great story did you all enjoy it yes awesome now it's time for us to say goodbye well now before we say goodbye i have something to say really yes charlie you won the race fair and square and i don't need a rematch but you know what i would like to go for a run with you once more marara i am glad that you've learned the lesson that athletics is not just about competition it's also about being healthy and and keeping fit look here you need this back no 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 charlie i can't no, i can't come I, on marara take I, it that uh, was your boy oh you were mad wow it's good that you're friends again but we really have to say goodbye Yeah now thank you all for hanging out with us and for you at home thank you for tuning in now make sure that you join us again on Saturday for a brand new episode of the Nozo and if you would like to contact us just ask your parents to send us a text with your name and address to 5606 and you will become an instant Nozo club member come on everyone let's say goodbye goodbye, goodbye.